This is Toy Defense, or rather, it was Toy Defense last time I played it. So around a year ago, I went on the Roblox game page, and I searched up Tower Defense. My goal was to find a game with the lowest like ratio. Of course, it still had to have players, because I wasn't going to play some random game made by a three-year-old that is just called Tower Defense. And the lowest I could find happened to be Toy Defense, which only had a 49% like ratio, meaning that more than half the people that played this game didn't like it. And well, this is how the game looked, and I gotta say the gameplay wasn't exactly the most thrilling either. Also, there was no tutorial, so I had no idea what to do for the first, like, 10 minutes of playing this game. Eventually, with the help of teammates, we managed to make it through the waves, and I did say I'm liking the idea. So after a year and the game finally going out of beta, let's see how much the game has improved and if the developers have really put the potential this game had into play. So here I am and I've loaded into Toy Defense. First thing I see is a tutorial. This is definitely something the original version of the game lacked because I had no idea what to do in that version, but now I do. It explains the gist of the game to me and when I check out the building UI, it actually looks really good. I build my first sort of base and I put a recruit on top. Thankfully, all the stats of all the blocks and the towers is actually listed in game, so I won't have to try and describe how good everything is, because if you play, you'll be able to see for yourself. And after that, I send out the first wave. Now, it is a little bit anticlimactic, because I just have to sit here and wait for one enemy. Yeah, the first wave is not that exciting, but I get it, it's an introductory wave. It's supposed to show you how the game works. I then went and redeemed the code, because why wouldn't I do that? TD release, and it gave me one cracker. This is actually really good considering the first wave made me a hundred times less than this code. So with this cracker I went ahead and bought an acrylic lunchbox, which was the most expensive thing I could afford, and I got, well, this stuff. I got a lot of stronger blocks, and there's actually quite a bit to say about these new blocks. This game has caltrops, so it's taking essentially BTD spikes and adding that mechanic to this game. Also I noticed there's units at the bottom right, and all that means is just the amount of toy soldiers you can have placed down. There's a limit of 10, but you can buy more. And also I got a gift, which I thought would do something, so I placed it somewhere over there. Then I kind of just reinforced my recruit and sent out the second wave. Now the second wave actually was a wave, there were several enemies, so this is definitely a step up from the first wave where there's just one. Thankfully my blocks were kind of strong because I don't think my soldier would have been able to handle all of these if it weren't for that. But now I had .03 crackers and I decided to use it on a starter lunchbox. This actually gave me some pretty good stuff, including a new toy soldier. It was the gunslinger, which is essentially a little bit stronger of a recruit. Notice I also got some glue. I wasn't using this either because, again, it's very small, but the idea of glue is also really good. Slowing down enemies to allow your towers more time to attack. This is, again, something that we can see in Bloons Tower Defense 6, except the only difference is that a glue on a map this big is gonna do nothing. While on BTD6, the glue actually hits all of the balloons, so the glue in this game will need a rework, but the idea is really creative for a build and survive sort of game. Oh, and also there's ladders and wedges, which I'm not very sure, I think they're just there to make your build look better, maybe so you can climb your own build, because they don't really do the best job of actually defending, but whatever. We now started seeing some stronger enemies, and uh, the present was actually absolutely useless. It's just a trophy item, I guess. I shoot down wave 3, and now... I think it's about time. Yep, I'm gonna spend some Robux on some crackers. Now I know pay to win is not always the best thing to do, but for the purpose of this video, I wanted to showcase this game more thoroughly, and I wanted to support the developers. And 56 is a lot. First I bought a plastic lunchbox for whatever reason, and it actually gave me two toy soldiers. But this wasn't enough for me. I was going straight for the titanium lunchbox, because the last one is way too expensive. And the first one was absolutely trash, I didn't get anything good from it. But from the second one, as I saw at the bottom right of my screen, I had just gotten two soldiers, and one of them was a legendary minigunner. I got a 3% tower. I then spent the rest on some acrylics just to get a few more blocks. And as I started looking through the build tab, oh my god did I realize how strong this minigunner is. 320 DPS, 1k health, I mean, this thing was OP. So I messed around with some blocks, then I whipped up a quick base that was going to be pretty strong and be able to handle a lot of the waves. Now the base doesn't look very exciting, it's pretty small and anticlimactic, but the stuff that's on top of it is no joke. I mean, just look what happens when the enemies approach. Yep, this isn't even a challenge anymore. So I started speeding through the waves, we started getting some stronger stuff, and when I got to wave 10, we got a boss! The music changed and things were starting to feel pretty intense. Now unfortunately, the 400 HP of the Tan Brute was merely a warm-up for my towers. 
I gotta say though, that death animation is not something you usually see. Man really had a bunch of TNT in his inventory when I killed him. After that, I continued playing through the waves. I saw some race cars and then I saw some drones. Then, uh, this happened. Yep, the game is really this laggy. The TPS of the server is going down to 1. Yeah, this is uh, not very playable. I tried again and it got better, but then it got worse, then it got better and got worse, which was kind of annoying, but let's skip a little bit forward here. The TPS is now fine, and I actually expanded my base. Looks a little bit bigger now, even though still anticlimactic. And then what do you know what? The TPS drops back down to 2. Oh my god, this game is not optimized. Regardless, I kept making it through the waves. I was now seeing some enemies with swords, some enemies with shovels enemies with shields and batons, and before I knew it, I was already at the next boss, the Tan Officer. This guy was essentially the commander for all the other zombies. They were a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, <laughs> but still, no match for my towers. The Tan Officer himself had a gun, and when he approached, he got absolutely crapped on. Doesn't seem like he dies, and that is because he goes into rage mode, where he boosts all the other enemies a ton, and they start all charging with their axes towards my tower which they still don't manage to take down because my stuff is still too strong, and the Tan Officer is defeated. Now, Wave 22 was interesting. When I started it, there was nothing. I was thinking, what's wrong with the game? I was looking up. Then suddenly, what the hell? Why is my base suddenly swarmed by a bunch of enemies? And I thought, you know, no problem. My stuff is really strong, and I actually lost this wave. Well, it was time to improvise. I started spamming a bunch of random blocks in hopes that they would reveal the enemies that were invisible, and thankfully, the plan actually worked. These enemies are called assassins, and I think I did discover a pretty good way to counter them. Thanks to this, I was able to defeat this round, but just barely. The next round, thankfully, was a little bit easier. It had some enemies with guns, but I was able to take out everything before they could be a real problem. But next wave, they were a problem, actually. They absolutely shredded my tower. And this is where the progression of the game really shows. Some waves are twice, even three times harder than the previous one. This is not something you see in tower defense games like TDS, where every wave is a little bit harder than the last. This progression gets significantly harder, and that's because Toy Defense wants you to grind the same rounds over and over until you make enough crackers and get good enough stuff to finally move on to the next. But I was having none of that. In fact, I saw the Endless button, and that actually got me very curious, so I decided to click it, and immediately it started moving through all of the waves, because I'm pretty sure all Endless mode is is just all the waves in a row. And that's what it was, actually. It was all of the waves. Yep, same exact stuff. Except I got annihilated by the Tan Officer this time because enemies... Except I got annihilated by the Tan Officer this time because of how many enemies there were. And then when he suddenly spawned and boosted them all, it was way too much for my stuff to handle. So what was I going to do next? Well, actually, just completely magically gained 3,000 crackers. I wanted to get all the way to the end of this game for the sake of this video. And uh, thank you very much, developers, for giving me this. But I'd go on to buy a bunch of carbon fiber lunchboxes, which were the most expensive ones in the game. And you know what happened? Yep, that's right. I got a mythical unit. This is a 1% chance. You know how many people in the history of toy defense have gotten a mythical unit? Just 20. This could be the most hardcore players that play this game 24-7. And only 20 of them have gotten a mythical unit, so you are about to see something truly insane. With all these new carbon fiber blocks and towers, I was going to build a base so strong that nothing would be a challenge. I opened my build tab, and done. Yeah, if you were expecting something a little bigger, sorry to disappoint you, but I mean, forgive me, you've probably had to say it more times than I have. What was on this tower was, well, that. That beam came from the Railgunner, which is the mythical unit in this game. This thing is absolutely no joke. I mean, what? This is just so much stronger than any enemy in the game just gets at any point. And the next few rounds, I breeze through them and, oh wait, is that a plane? That was indeed a plane, and it was dropping eggs, and out of those eggs would pop out... Uh, well, I actually can't even tell you because they get instantly shredded by my defense. Yep, my stuff was way too strong. And just like that, it was time to spawn the last wave and see what was really here. I sent it out, and actually some pretty banger music started to play, and it was the Tan Juggernaut. Now, this thing looks absolutely terrifying. It's massive with 10,000 HP, which I would have never been able to defend if I didn't have these crackers. And his minigun starts actually shredding through my carbon fiber wedges, which are actually really strong blocks. Then my railgunner is just like, what's up? The juggernaut apparently has a rage mode, and then the railgunner is like, what's up again? I mean, what? It's, this is it? Well, not really, actually. Did you forget that there's an endless mode? So I sent it out, and, um, I, uh, um, this is a, oh, 
um, this doesn't really seem fair. Um, I okay, okay, fine. I'll put the game link in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and also stay tuned.